Yes. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I think one of the fantastic things that's happening is we're seeing technology evolve very, very rapidly. And what you see today as being the best available technology may, in a couple of years, uh, not be the best available technology. So what we need to do is keep on top of that. And I think uh, as part of keeping on top of that, what we need to do is look at product stewardship. And I want to talk to you very much about that today because we are looking at a low emissions conference and we need to look at things from cradle to grave. It's just not what do you get out of a battery that you go and put in your Tesla car. Where did that battery come from? How much energy did it take to make? And one of the things I'm going to talk about today is how we improve the energy and emission profile in that life cycle. What if I told you uh, an electric vehicle, the, the energy involved in making the battery pack was about the same as burning eight years of petrol in a petrol powered car. What would you think about it then? Where did the, the energy come from that produced that battery? Was that energy renewable? Was it fossil fuel? Was it indeed uh, nuclear power? All these things come into play and I, I think if you look at the way things have been done in the past and you'll see on the screen, uh, a pyrometallurgical plant, and that, that plume is sulphur dioxide, fairly unpleasant stuff, uh, but this is the way things were done in the past. And to some extent, if you're going to produce lithium chemicals, it's not unlike what's done in China. And let's just zoom in on that, and you'll see in the forefront, down in here, a series of uh, brown buildings, they survived for a mere 10 years at the foot of this plant and became completely uninhabitable, displacing 7,000 people. Do we want to do that again? Of course we don't. So bear in mind what I'm going to tell you about is how we improve the energy footprint and the emissions profile in the life cycle of energy metals. So at Lithium Australia, we'd prefer that it wasn't done by pyrometallurgical techniques. We'd prefer it was done in solution with low emissions, low cost and product recycling. And they're the keys to achieving the things I've been talking about. And the disclaimer just doesn't want to go away. Okay, so lithium power, the lithium power management uh, revolution, what's it all about? Um, if you look at how we've progressed over the last few hundred years, we started off with beasts of burden. We went to steam power with Stevenson and his rocket, went to internal combustion engines, the legacy engines that in a few years we won't have anymore. We got into a battle between Tesla and Edison over AC, DC power. Uh, Edison wanted to prove AC was pretty bad, so he fried a few elephants and burned a couple of dogs and invented the electric chair. That was the culmination of Edison trying to prove that AC was much more dangerous than DC, but Tesla won and got his badge on the front of the world's most prominent electric motor vehicle. Then we went to grid power, and today it's all about portable power. It's renewable power 24-7. It's power that you can hold in your hand. It's power that you can use as a consumer whenever you want to use it. So how does Lithium Australia fit into that business? It is about environmental stewardship. It's about resource utilisation. And to some extent, it's about taking resources that other people don't want. So that creates less mining, and with less mining, there's less material movement. With less material movement, there's less emissions. With Lithium Australia's silage process, there is no roasting. And as a consequence, there are less greenhouse gases. So Lithium Australia provides that technology uh, combined with a technology just about to be purchased. will be approved at our... AGM in a couple of weeks' time, which will take us not only from mine waste, it'll take us right through to the production of cathode materials and all with the right uh, emission and energy profile. So from mine gate to cathode materials, I mentioned how we're fusing the, these couple of technologies together. 
and Lithium Australia is the only company in the world capable of recovering lithium from all lithium silicates. Um, we like to process or would like to process materials that other people consider to be waste. And at the moment, there's more lithium discharge to waste streams around the world than ever gets into the production stream. And as a consequence, a lot of these things have already had mining cost paid for by someone else. So it's nice to use those materials. It's nice to get better utilisation from resources around the globe. We've also taken uh, positions in most major lithium provinces around the world. That's not necessarily to dig new holes. And as I said, people are digging holes and throwing the stuff away. Why would you dig another one? It's, it's probably not necessary to do so. But if you invest in heavily, I might say, in plant and equipment in any of these provinces and your supply gets cut off, you've got to have an insurance policy. So our exploration portfolio, which is the largest in the world, provides us with that insurance policy. So we've taken major positions in all the major lithium provinces. We've got eight uh, projects in Western Australia, one in Northern Territory, a few of them in Queensland, South Australia, Mexico, Canada and Germany. So the future's about sustainability and building that into the, uh, the energy metal cycle. And this is how the cycle looks, you'll see there uh, the primary materials coming in in the blue sector, we've got the 100% owned silage process which cap is capable of dissolving all of those things and pulling out the metals we want, including the lithium of course, and a lot of other byproducts to get the operating costs down. Uh, the lithium chemicals then can move on into the production of cathode materials. We are just about to successfully complete the takeover of the very small particle company, a company that spent privately, and this is a staggering amount of money, privately spent $30 million developing this technology and it produces probably the best battery cathode material in the world. Um, it was run by a, a bunch of people that were very good from a technical point of view, from our point of view, and very fortunately not so good at commercialising the opportunity and it closed down and has been mothballed. They have a pilot plant in Brisbane. Uh, mothballed about three years ago. So we will take that out of mothballs and start producing cathode materials again. Oh, I should just mention uh, that uh, you get into the grey sector of that uh, cycle and that's where things get discharged. And how many of you have a spare mobile phone at home that does nothing? Three. I, I suspect you're not all telling the truth. There are Currently 19 million mobile phones in Australia that are unaccounted for and they're sitting in people's bottom drawers. Now someone has paid to mine that material, process that material, make the lithium chemicals, make the cathodes and um, if you'll excuse the vernacular, once you get the stuff to that stage, if you're pissed on it, it will dissolve. So getting it back into the system is not all that difficult. But what do we do with them? Oh, we put them in our bottom drawer or we send them away for landfill. Crazy idea. So what we've got to do is improve those things. Um, and as I say, negligible, about 3% about of lithium ion batteries currently recycled in Australia. Um, but as, as Lithium Australia stands today, we certainly recognise, I think, the shortfalls in the industry. And we've got uh, supply shortages, cobalt in particular, so why not pick up those batteries that would otherwise go to landfill and reuse them? I don't know. Just seems like a good idea. Um, we've got ethical constraints on conflict metals. We've got embedded ch child labour. It goes on and on and on. But there are ways around this. And we all have to work together to do that. So we are striving to create the circular economy from the uh, uh, production and recycling of lithium batteries. Now, I'll take one example, and it's a joint venture that we have in Germany, it's at a, a mine called Sardestorf. We have it in a joint venture with Tin International, subsidiary of Deutsche Rostoff. Uh, in the upper sections of that mine, you can see the mine workings there. It was mined for tin, which comes in narrow veins, and uh, the mineralisation is somewhat erratic. At today's tin price, probably a bit of a hard call to mine that. But it has a pervasive lithium halo sitting all around that tin deposit. In fact, everything that you can see there, coloured green and blue, contains vast quantities of lithium micas. So what we've done with this deposit 
and a number of others that we've looked at. We've looked at low cost processing to recover the tin first and then uh, follow that by so conventional processing. And th this is only gravity separation, really simple stuff. And then take the tails, uh, float the, uh, the lithium minerals out of those tails, primarily the micas, and recover uh, almost as much of the periodic table as you want to. Once you do that, the world is your oyster. There are so many things in there. You can get lithium, potassium. These things, lithium micas, are generally about 10% uh, potassium oxide. They're potassium ores with a bit of lithium is the reality. But let's focus on lithium for the time being and consider the other things to be byproduct credits. There's a whole range of them. So if you take this particular operation and add back... Assume it's a tin mine, and then add back a credit for lithium, potassium, silicon, aluminium, cesium, gallium, uh, right through to probably californium and all sorts of bits and pieces. No uranium or thorium, but um, add back the uh, credits for all of those things. What you can do is breathe life into an otherwise uneconomic mine and make that a sustainable source of lithium for the European battery industry. So that's what sustainability is about. It's not about digging another hole. It's about making the best use of what you've got available. So a couple of words about the uh, silage process, which I mentioned as hydrometallurgical, no roasting required, Sulf sulfuric acid required at the front end, uh, mix a slurry of the uh, target mineral, be that uh, spodumene or lithium mica. Uh, you could do it with quartz if you wanted to. Um, I'm not sure why you'd ever do that, but uh, the, the process is... Uh, pretty aggressive when it comes to breaking particular bonds, silica oxygen bonds, and putting things into solution. So you mix a bit of calcium fluoride with the slurry and then hit it with uh, sulfuric acid. The uh, sequence in which you do that's quite important. If you do it in the sequence that I mentioned, uh, the reaction between the uh, generated fluorine and the silica oxygen bonds is several orders of magnitude greater than the rate at which you dissolve the calcium fluoride. So you can't produce H. HF in solution, really interesting situation. If you do it the other way around, you do produce HF, so that becomes a bit of a disaster. So you've got to make sure you get it in the right sequence, but once you've done that, everything goes into solution. Then you just cherry pick the, uh, the metals that you want. As you raise the pH, all your base metals, trivalence, divalence, drop out. You can remove those as commercial products and you're left standing with the monovalence, primarily uh, potassium, and of course lithium, and you pre then, pre then precipitate the lithium as a, a carbonate or a hydroxide. Looking at the cost profile, if you have a look at the uh, cost profile for uh, roasting and leaching, very energy intensive. Uh, these estimates are by Roskill, of course, um, show that the median cost for producing lithium carbonate, carbonate out of hard rock Deposits is something like $7,000. If you do what I've been talking about and take the byproduct credits, you're down there in the realms of the by-producers. You're amongst the cheapest of the producers in the world. The other thing, of course, that it does for you is it makes you uh, less susceptible to single commodity prices in that you don't have to rely entirely upon lithium. You've got a broad spectrum of other materials. Develop development of battery cathodes... Well, as I mentioned, we're acquiring the very small particle company, so-called because, yes, you guessed it, it makes very small particles. And those small particles are what we see in battery cathodes. They're complex metal oxides or phosphates or a combination of the two. Uh, and the acquisition of that company provides us with patented technology to produce these materials that can deliver... And I've seen nothing like this in the, the cathode manufacturing field. It's, it's absolutely fabulous. It can deliver very, very precise chemistry to the oxides and phosphates precipitated using the system. Now, one of the problems with producing cathodes is quality control. Most of the other systems don't manage to achieve that. The very small particle company technology does and has been capable, has, has produced some of the best cathode materials in the world and we recently tested some of those materials. We manufactured batteries in Germany, tested them against what else was on the market. Um, not ahead by streets and you can't, can't get ahead by a long way because you're dealing with uh, uh, apples to apples chemistry but I can say that the performance of the batteries that we produced exceeded those 
of the uh, industry benchmarks, names of which I can't repeat in this venue. But it gives us the ability to, to uh, fast track um, our, uh, our entry into the production of cathode materials and quite clearly this is a technology that can bolt onto the back end of silage, you can bolt it onto the back end of most of the other lithium processing or lithium chemical production technologies quite frankly uh, and we'll do all this with a pretty low environmental impact. So what's our plan? Our plan ultimately is to deliver uh, battery chemicals to the industry uh, with the lowest emission possible emission profile possible and the lowest possible energy footprint. And um, we'll do that by commercialising silage. Now most of these things we've already done. There's the lab testing, pilot testing at Ansto, where we ran through a, a pilot uh, plant there. Engineering and design, which is uh, just about complete, will be complete in December. Um, then we'll make a decision to invest in a large-scale pilot plant, which will be two and a half thousand ounces, two and a half thousand uh, tonnes of lithium carbonate production. And I've got to say, we've put together uh, a fairly unique funding package to do that. We currently have 18 million bucks in the bank, and we've managed to factor the R&D rebate, which will pull in another 20 million dollars. So we're sitting there at the moment with access to something like uh, 38 million dollars on our balance sheet, not on someone else's on our balance sheet. That will allow us to build that plant. We'll also uh, commercialise the VSPC technology, recommissioning the pilot plant in Brisbane and producing cathode materials then that can be tested by major consumers um, and develop the relevant partnerships to produce that longer term. We're also looking at the recovery of metals from uh, waste batteries, as I've mentioned, and the regeneration of those using the VSPC technology into cathode. So where do you want to be? The sweet spot in the uh, value chain is taking one tonne of lithium carbonate valued at 10,000 bucks to produce five tonnes of cathode material, each tonne of which generates about $35,000. So you've got uh, an incredible uplift there, 10 to 15 times. That's where you really need to be. So we will do those things and be the only company at the moment that's capable of doing that and delivering those products to the marketplace. So it's all about taking mine waste into battery cathodes. Incidentally, uh, the image there discharges an enormous amount of uh, lithium mica waste. I'll skip over this, but uh, really what it, what it tells you is we're situating ourselves to uh, uh, produce uh, lithium minerals, produce lithium chemicals, produce the cathode materials and to recycle the materials and make new batteries. Uh, just a brief word on this, we are simplifying our portfolio, farming out some of the lithium assets and spinning out our graphite assets uh, and that's a new IPO. Uh, if you want details, come around to the booth. Uh, there are the ugly ducklings that control the company, current market capitalisation in excess of $80 million and I think the thing that I mentioned is access to uh, a fairly large pile of cash and contributing shares with a drawdown capacity of another $35 million beyond that. So we're sitting pretty well where we want to be, self-sustained in terms of capital requirements and ultimately self-sustained in the production of lithium chemicals and uh, cathode materials. So why invest in Lithium Australia? It's all about sustainability. The uh, bullet points are there. We're the uh, only company capable of dissolving all lithium silicates and recovering the lithium, developing the best cathode materials in the world and capable of integrating those processes to give you an outcome that completes the energy metal cycle. So that's about sustainability, it's about low energy footprint, it's about low emissions. We've got strategic partnerships in all the major lithium provinces and a very experienced management team, zero. Thank you.